We just completed the uh, video portion of the last hot session, and now I just want to talk about some additional information that will be pertinent and helpful for the future. The first thing that we talked about was the bite. Now understand that when you grab the bite, if at a short distance, you're going to need the backup firefighter to clear your bed. And that was an example shown in our own video. But if you're at a longer distance, you won't need that backup firefighter to clear if you hold that bite. You just continue to walk and that will clear the bed without any other personnel helping you. We also had the idea of the backup firefighter coming to the alpha side and they held the stack dry. It's really key on this for when the captain is doing the 360, and if you don't know what's going on, it's best to hold that to make sure you listen and understand the orders of the captain. So as soon as they uh, respond to dispatch, in this case was um, had a fire on the Charlie uh, Delta Quadrant, well then right there by listening to your radio, you know immediately that you're just gonna move that hose. And in our case, he moved it around on the Bravo side, and we used a coil conversion where we dropped it. Now understand in a coil conversion, that's 100 feet. Um, so you want to stay within six feet of a door wherever you do any air drops. It's a nice clear, and we also chose a spot on this side of the landing. Now, with the drop spot um, for, the, for the second aid crew, the officer could be right on the ball and also understand that, well, if we went down the Bravo side, just for clear hose management, not having hose over top of hose, you could tell the second in crew to make their way to the Delta side, and then they claim this landing. And then it just makes for a nice clear way for hose. We don't drop it in the middle where a second in crew's stumbling over it. The Minuteman, be aware too that you take the coupling and you take the nozzle and you put it at the door and that gives you 50 feet. So understand the difference between the 100 feet in the coil conversion and 50 feet with the minute man. So good practice from officers as well is to tell dispatch just before you make entry that you're going to make entry. This allows for everyone to understand that the radios are working because you wouldn't want to get inside and then all of a sudden Try to use your communications and find out, well, it's not working. So it's just a good practice to make that, then everybody knows that we're working well, and then we make entry. Now, door control. We also talked about this. It's really important to make sure, and it's the responsibility of the backup firefighter to deal with door control. I talked in the video with having it a foot, no, no wider than a foot. But remember, the reason we do door control is if we have that door wide open, that's what's feeding and fueling that fire. So we want to minimize that airflow coming in to feed the fire. So that's where we stand with flow path. When the second in crew comes in, their first, first responsibility is to establish water supply. Once they've established that, then they're going to grab the second line off the first engine. And that's essentially the backup line. And so they've taken this line and they've walked around the delta side. But if the engineer is available out of the second engine, or maybe it's the third, either way, they have a responsibility or could come around back and know that if there's a backup firefighter on here, we would want to bump them. So it's, it's, it's only natural that an engineer, because usually they're handy, having their SCBA on can bump that fi backup firefighter to get in there to help their crew help manage that hose and move swiftly to ultimately get to the goal of knocking the fire down. Now we also showed you charge lines of a 10 foot loop and how to roll it and use it that way. I also said it's a great way to use two and a half charge line to move hose as well. Um, the, the key is on that is to make sure that when we enter, if you use a coil to come in, that's fine. But what we're saying is, is just bring 10 feet in the interior so you have access to that and availability before you get too deep in it looking for 10 extra feet. Um, so the other thing that we also wanted you to think about is the bump. We brought this terminology in only to acknowledge that it's moving personnel on the line. So when a backup firefighter, when a captain tells a backup firefighter to bump, they're just moving forward on the line. And it's just another way to help deal with pinch points and keep communication as minimal as possible. Um, we also talked about 
having 10 feet at the fire room. Well, this is what we would like to see. So before you make entrance into that fire room, have 10 feet down there. If, again, we're in condition, sometimes and most times we don't see in a fire, but if you are aware of where hinges are, we would prefer you to go on the hinge side because, again, that's just avoiding an extra pinch point. So when you have fire control, understanding that fire control is you've knocked the fire down. And the only way that you're going to know if you're another crew, if they have knocked that fire down is, i.e., listening on your radio or when you actually see them hydraulic ventilate. In this case, now you can open your door control because we'll want nice cool air and we ultimately want to have visibility so that if there are patients, we get to them as quickly as possible. Lastly, we spoke about the tailboard chat afterwards, the debrief. It's really important to get that immediate feedback and just go over what went well and what we could improve on. And that's ultimately the only reason why we want to do that and understand that it's only to help us to be better for that next fire call. Now, the premise of this whole exercise was to do several things, but one of them was to just create benchmarks. And some of the benchmarks that we were talking about were make sure that we at least have 50 feet at the door. We also had of the entrance. And then we also had a benchmark of having 10 feet at the fire room. So there were certain things like that. We also wanted to talk about or elaborate on best practices, best practices of hose management. Everything from just leaving the truck and understanding how we don't have hose over top of hose, managing hose with pinch points. But believe it or not, that's where a lot of problems come is with just simple hose management. We also talked about just basically giving you extra tools. All firefighters, if you get an extra tool for your tool belt, maybe you've picked up a few different techniques that are gonna help you for your next fire call. We also wanna standardize things, and such things that we wanted to standardize were just simple personnel placement on the hose. Having a nozzle person, then the officer, and a backup firefighter. Some other things that we tried to standardize are tick camera. The tick camera is the responsibility of the captain. Um, the backup firefighter when coming in, the responsibility would be of making sure that they bring a tool. We also talked about standardizing just packing of the hose. So those were a few things. Situational awareness. Listen, every fire is different. We know that. Um, and you just have to use those old spidey senses. You have to see the bigger picture and it's your fire experiences that you've had in the past that will help you become better aware of the actual situation to make great calls. Lastly, we really wanted to talk about goals. We wanted to make sure that everyone that arrives on scene understands the goal. And in this case, we have a fire. So the first in engine, the goal is to have everybody working together to get this first in crew to put that fire up. And the, 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 the reality of it is the problem is the fire. So if we can get to that fire and put it out, then the problem goes away. And so for us, that's the priority. We've talked a little bit about search and some, some crews brought that up. And again, thinking of the goal, the goals to get the fire out. So if on our way, making our way to the fire, we run into a patient, well, we're obviously gonna get on the radio and we're going to tell dispatch that we are exiting out, say, the Charlie side with the patient immediately. But if we don't run into a patient, we are heading straight for that fire to put it out. Just understand that the training division is a, is a small entity of people. Any suggestions, any feedback that you can give us, it's our job, really, to deliver. And I hope that, well, I know that when I picked up on a few things that some of the senior captains or senior firefighters brought, I absolutely tried to present it and to, again, delivered in a way that we all learn from this and we're all better firefighters. Thank you.